We begin tonight with the latest gun violence in the Rose City. Thank you for joining us. I'm Blair Best. One person is dead after a shooting in southeast Portland. Now this marks the 25th homicide in the city this year. There are still very few details, but here's what we know so far. Police responded to a shooting inside a business on southeast Foster Road just before 1030 this morning. When they arrived, they found one person dead. Anyone with information is asked to call Portland Police. But we have new details on a shooting in Hillsboro. It happened at the Washington County Fairgrounds Sports Complex just before 5 yesterday afternoon. Police say two suspects in custody are 17 and 15 years old. Now, when police got there, they found a 17 year old shot. He was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Police are still investigating what led up to the shooting. Washington County deputies are searching for a suspect accused of attempted murder. Detectives say 43 year old Glenn Hornsby Jr. attempted to rob a woman, fired a gun at her, and then when she tried to drive off, chased her and shot at her again. Now this was Friday evening on Northwest Dogwood Street in the Cedar Mill area. The victim was hit once in the chest. Paramedics took her to the hospital where she was treated and released. Deputies say they found Hornsby's car in Hillsboro and considered Considered him to be armed and dangerous. Anyone who sees him should call 911. Like when I first heard that, like the three-year-old got shot, that was that was really heartbreaking. Tonight, a toddler remains in critical condition in the ICU after being shot at a home in Tuckwilla, Washington on Friday. Police say someone drove the toddler and a family member to a nearby fire station, then took off. Medics treated the child and took him to the hospital. Now, police say the shooting does not appear to be random and they're working to get more information. Well, we're a nation that's getting used to this increased gun violence, and the headlines here are seen overseas, too. NBC's Noah Pransky explains the impact it's having on tourism in the U.S. It can be hard to explain America's gun culture. Just talk to someone in Europe or beyond. I don't understand America's obsession with guns. I really don't. I honestly don't understand how anyone could live in so America. bloody stupid. It's uncivilized. It's just crazy. It, uh, it's... It's, I, I, there are no words. They struggle to understand the gun culture here, and many are hesitant about visiting. I won't travel in the U.S. anymore. It's safer to vacation in countries without guns. The uniquely American mass murder problem even prompted Amnesty International, as well as the governments of Japan, Ireland, and Germany, some of our biggest tourist pipelines, to issue travel warnings about the risk of gun violence if visiting the United States. We wondered, are guns scaring tourists away from coming here at all? Safety is a really big uh, factor in tourism. It's probably number one. It's what rules places out of where you visit. Alan Williams, professor of tourism at the UK's University of Surrey. But we just don't understand um, what's going on in the United States. Recent polling of wealthy, well-traveled citizenries found at least seven out of ten adults in Australia, Canada, the UK, Germany, and France all rate gun violence in the U.S. as poor or terrible. And even though the odds of a tourist encountering gun violence are radically low, our horrific headlines are seen pretty much everywhere. And I'm sure you're going to lose some tourists because of that. But at the same time, you are seen as a country that's relatively secure, relatively safe. Williams described three general buckets of leisure traveler to the United States. The person who's never been and is most susceptible to concerns about gun violence. The person who's a repeat traveler and is more confident about their safety here. And the person visiting friends and relatives in the States where obligation or loyalty often outweigh perceived risk. In short, it's impossible to know how many people chose to travel somewhere else instead of America because of gun violence. But U.S. tourism remains resilient. We're still the most visited country in the entire world. Unfortunately, we also remain number one in mass shootings, a category for which we have no rivals. Now to a traffic alert. I-5 South on the lower deck of the Markham Bridge will be closed later this evening for inspection. Now that closure starts at 10 o'clock tonight and goes through 5 tomorrow morning. Drivers will have to detour onto I-405 South. Well, it's been a cloudy and rainy weekend. Meteorologist Joe Ranieri joins us from the Weather Center. And Joe, please tell us that sunshine is on the way.
Blair, it's on the way. Come Tuesday, <laughs> yes. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Not only are we be seeing some sunshine, we'll be seeing the potential for some record temperatures heading in a later part of this week. I want to show you uh, some of our weather cameras across the uh, region right now out to the Oregon coast. Temperature of 53 degrees, mostly cloudy and gray, like you said, Blair. And as you travel inland here a little bit, we're looking at temperatures in the low 50s. Yeah, that cloud deck was pretty thick, but heading in a later part of this week, our temperatures are going to be 20, 25 degrees warmer. Uh, by at least Friday, and there's a good chance we could be looking at not only our first 70 degree day of the year, but also our first 80 degree day of the year as well. We have to get past this weak system that's going to be uh, brushing on by late tonight and into tomorrow, bringing in some light showers for your morning commute. Again, the few showers to start off throughout tomorrow morning, it will kind of be hit or miss throughout part of the afternoon and the early part of the evening, and we slowly start to see our temperatures warm up over the next couple of days. Daytime highs right now are in the mid to the upper 50s, still cooler from where we should be. Now, as we head into the later part of this month, we should be seeing daytime highs on average in the low 60s. Yeah, we're going to be going well above the low 60s over the next couple of days. We'll talk more about our heat that's finally going to be here this week in just a few minutes. All right, Joe, looking forward to it. Well, you may have heard that the bird flu has been a major issue this past year. It decimated chicken flocks and was the reason eggs were so expensive. Well, as Tim Gordon reports, the highly contagious strain has now taken aim at a wild bird population, one that is already challenged. The California condor, a magnificent bird with a nine foot wingspan that can soar for hours at speeds of up to 55 miles per hour. On the brink of extinction in the 1980s, when just 22 existed, conservation efforts have slowly brought their population up to about 500. Now avian or bird flu is hitting the endangered species. This is so highly infectious that once you have it in a population, it spreads very quickly. Oregon and State University's Don Dirks explains that is very concerning for the condors. Lab work at Oregon State's Carson School of Veterinary Medicine detected bird flu in at least seven dead condors, all from one of three wild flocks in the country. Yes, it has been detected in a condor population in Arizona. The population is about 100 birds, so this is very serious. Very serious because the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service reports that 20 of the Arizona condors have died, a fifth of the population so far, with more testing now underway. It is the same H5N1 strain of bird flu that's responsible for the deaths of more than 40 million egg-laying hens in the U.S. since January of 2022. The virus spread through bird-to-bird -bird contact. Egg producers have put down entire flocks of chickens to try and stop the rapid spread. But of course we're not going to do that to the California condors. So everything that can be done will be done in terms of providing care for the birds that are sick. But there is no vaccine for the birds. And now the highly endangered California condor facing influenza as another challenge to its existence. Tim Gordon, KGW News.